I was dancing, I've been dancing in dance groups for a while, and in 1987, the director of my dance group was uh, Charlie Kirako. And that year, he was the managing director for FDF, and he asked me, and I had heard about FDF um, from several people, including, and I, okay, go back a little bit. Mm -hmm. I danced with Nick Vargas in that group called Panigiri. So Nick had been, you know, gone as a judge and had talked about it. And so I George Nichols. So um, I had heard about FDF, and I was really interested in it. And I, so Charlie asked me if I was willing to be an announcer. Announce dancers, you know, the dance groups going on stage. Okay. And I said, I would love to. So I went, and I was there two or three days announcing. Um, I had a great time. I just, it was like such an exciting experience that weekend. I just loved it. And um, I told Charlie, I said, one of these days I want to be a judge, but I realized I need to learn more. And the next year, he introduced me to Don and Ellie Hyatt, who uh -huh. were the judge coordinators. And they were looking for new judges, and they asked me if I wanted to be a judge. So that's how I became a judge. And how long did you dance, did you say, before I that started, yourself? I started dancing in 1967. So I've been dancing about 20 years. Where are you from I, originally? I was born in Egypt. Um, my grandparents on my father's side are Greeks, but they're, but, I should say but, and they're Greek Jews. They're not mm -hmm. Greek Orthodox, which is rare enough. Um, I didn't learn, I didn't grow up speaking Greek, but I always had this sort of Greek identity in my background when I was new there. So when I started dancing, folk dancing, I started international folk dancing, but I would say it was Greek. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just like took to it immediately. It was like I'd found a home in folk and dancing. In folk dancing? Yeah, international. And were you really young, like a child? I was or? 20, no, I just graduated from college, I was 22. So I so I, start, I was dancing and I danced in a dance group with the Intersection Dancers, mm -hmm. and then with Panayiri, and then uh, Charlie Kiraco took Panayiri over and we changed the name to Alas, and I danced with, with Alas. So I've been dancing continually with the dance group from 1969 until we have disbanded in 89, I think. And that, after that, that was it. I didn't perform again. I mean, I did occasional performances, but I did. We, I stopped the dance group at that time. That's mm -hmm. when I was Can you tell me a little bit about Charlie? I've heard a lot about him. Um, Charlie is a brilliant man, um, really, and he had a big role at FGF in the years between that time, which was the late 80s, and until he stopped in 2004, 2005. He stopped, mm -hmm. you know, he, he left the involvement with FGF. Mm -hmm. um, He's, he had a very, I think, a very wide knowledge mm -hmm. and a really deep understanding of what FDF was about and what, um, what, how he wanted to see it. And I think he and Peter were of like mind about a lot of issues. Mm -hmm. okay. He's ill, as you know. Yes. But, um, I heard he's getting better. Though, so he's getting better. Be great if we yes, he started dancing point. again. He comes up to LA for different dancings with FDF for one day this year. You became a judge in 80s, no. 1988. 1988, okay. And I've been a judge every year since. Tell me a little bit about that role and how, how it, tell me if you can remember how, how you felt about it at the beginning. I loved every minute of it. When I, when I, when we was over and I called Charlie up, I said this was the best weekend of my life ever. I just was, had such a great time. Um, I felt very unprepared, maybe, um, maybe, what's the word I'm looking for? Not as knowledgeable as I, as others, you know, um, I felt like I was a little bit over my head in, in that way. Um, but it's, you know, you learn as you go, mm -hmm. you know, of course, of course. So in that way now I feel more confident about, you know, what I see and what I know. I know there's other judges who know, um, dance on a deeper level, but I think there's so many aspects of judging the performance and there's just sort of an instinctual feeling about it. Um, I just really enjoyed it. It was, it was, it was so inspiring to see all these young people dance. And I know this was part of the church and I'm not part of the church, but seeing that connection and that community being involved together, kids, parents, judges, uh, visitors, people who just came to watch, mm -hmm. Uh, is, is an incredible experience. It's it's really uh, it's wild in some ways, and it's just you know it's really wonderful. I mean I'm, I know I'm sound like you know 
I don't know, overdoing it, maybe, but, but I do. I really feel that way about it. Um, and short of going to Greece, you know, every year, which I try to do anyway, this is one of the most exciting weekends. Mm -hmm. When you say you maybe don't know as much, you mean technically as technically, some of the yeah. other judges? But, yes. But describe what it, you feel like you, is your expertise. Maybe. Um, I tend to look at dance. When I judge dance, I tend to look at the overall look. Um, do they look... I mean, one of the things that we judges have actually pushed the dance group towards is trying to replicate the village look. Not so much a performance. We, we, we frown on excessive choreography or made-up steps. We really want them to feel like they're in the village, but because they're put on stage, the minute you take people out of the village to put them on stage, you've already changed the village look. Mm -hmm. So there has to be a little bit of theater to make it seem more real. So we try, I think we're all pretty much of one mind about, you know, making, replicating the village, but how much, to, how, what do you do to replicate the village? Everybody looks at it differently. Some people look at making sure the, the body movement, the, the style is, mm -hmm. that's the, ultimate base you know, judgment and if they don't do that then it's out and I have a different look at it because I think that you're dealing with kids who grew up in here they didn't grow up in the village there's no way they're going to dance like the village they've been taught the dances rather than learned organically by getting destined to their parents so already that changes the nature of it so I tend to look at the whole picture does this group to me when I look at them do I feel like they're look like they could be in the village um, are they moving naturally? Are they enjoying what they're doing? Do they look like they've been taught or do they look like they're just, you know, just dancing naturally like they're dancing at a festival, for example? Mm -hmm. um, and that to me is more of the look. I look at the style, of course the steps, the steps is basic. If they have the wrong steps then, you know, they're, they're not doing the dance. Right. Um, though I, you know, I think I allow for some mistakes. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously you can't judge, you can't, it's not, you know, zero or ten, either they do it wrong or they do it right. There's a variety of, there's a big range right. to judge on. Um, what about the, uh, one thing I'm just curious about is the judging of the costumes. Is that completely separate from the dancing? I know there were two. There's two Bertha different ways to judge. And, and Dina were looking at the costumes up close, but Right, there's two understand. different ways of looking at costumes. There's costume judges, and they look at whether the, 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 the costume is correct in terms of the original costumes from the village. And I can't talk about the specifics and what they look at. But we as dance judges also give a costume score. And that costume score is, we each interpret it a little bit differently. The idea is, does this look like a more or less like an authentic costume? It doesn't have to be, like if they're doing Macedonian from the village of Kozani, it doesn't have, they don't have to be wearing a Kozani costume. They could be wearing and they could even be wearing an island costume because that maybe that's all that's available to them. We don't, oh. we don't, as, as dance judges, we don't look whether the costume they're wearing matches the region that they're dancing. But we look at the costume, is the costume a reasonable replica of a village costume? And how do they move in it? Do they, you know, is, does, it, does it hamper their movement? And there are certain things that are really glaring. If you, there are certain kinds of dances if you do, Cretan dancing in a fustanella, which is the, the white the skirts, white. Mm -hmm. it looks odd. You know? And we were just talking about this right now, that a lot of more and more uh, groups are dancing in street clothes by saying we're presenting a suite from the 1940s. And so they're dancing in you know, 40s style street clothes, or they just make up a you know, street clothes. I didn't to see that. I don't know, maybe you didn't see that particular group that did that, mm -hmm. but some groups did that. Some group, not everybody does it, of course, but some groups do that. Some of us don't like it, don't like that. We want to see the traditional costumes. Um, and uh, some don't care, don't mind, especially if they put it in the context of... Because a lot of the older groups, especially now, and even some of the younger groups are doing it, they're setting their suites in a context. So they're like presenting, this is like a, a village uh, festival, a village glendy. Or this is a baptism in somebody, or this is a wedding, and there's two different communities in the wedding, so we do different kinds of dances because it's two different villages coming together. I did. I did notice that some of them had set up tables yes. and wine mm -hmm. and the whole Yeah, it's just you know setting in context. It's like a little bit of theater. Mm -hmm. and, uh, sometimes it's works, sometimes it doesn't. Like everything else. Yeah, <laughs> like everything else. That's right. true. <clears throat> How about the? Um, 
how has it changed over the years? I'll just approach it that way with if there has been any change with the um, connectedness, as Nick was saying, with the different generations, let's just start there, at FDF or the participation. I think we have less of participation by older uh, young people, people in their 20s and 30s. Um, I think it's become very heavy on the younger side. Um, but I could be wrong, you know, it's an impression because you know, if you look at numbers, it might come out differently, I don't know. Uh, always in the last, I don't know, for a long time now, the youngest groups, the you know, five to ten year olds, mm -hmm. are seem to be the most numerous. I guess their parents make them go, the older kids, they don't, you know, yeah, they don't want to go, they go. A lot of kids, when they, start, when they go to college, they stop dancing. They don't have time where they move away. Or, so that's where we lose a lot of the people when they go to college. Mm -hmm. But some come back. And some come back and dance after they finish. Some of them, like Eris, that you interviewed, he was living in Washington and was flying back to dance with this group for you know several years. Oh yeah. And after he moved. Well, he yeah. judged this year too. Yeah, he's been he? judging that for several years. Yeah. But he was a dance a dancer in the one group, and he was living in Washington, and he just every time he came out came out to visit his family or whatever, three or four times a year, he would dance and you know, he would rehearse and then he danced it after yeah. Yeah. Are you a dancer? I am a dancer. You probably said that to me. Yeah. Well, that's why I said yeah. I started dancing. You started in dancing. Do you yeah. still and Absolutely. you still dance? Yes. I What's love your it. favorite? Do you have a favorite region? Pontian, Pontos. Oh yeah. <laughs> and um, Peter's sons all like that. Yeah, I yes, yeah, so they they did some really marvelous three a few years ago. Um, my husband and I. My husband um, started dancing many years ago, and he left it for about forty years. And then when we met. He, we met at this dance venue where we dance here in LA now, and um, he started dancing again. And he, we went to Greece together about ten years ago, and we went to a function club, and he immediately that was f fell in love with it. And so both of us love that kind of dancing, and we have friends in Greece now. So when we go to Greece and we go to all of these function events in Greece and get the experience. Oh, and the, so they're in different there. villages. Or? Different villages, yeah. And you said a Pontian club. There's a, they used there used to be several dancing clubs, but it's kind of like you know some of them have closed. But we try to go when we can if they open because we go in the summer. A lot of club clubs close in the summer in Greece, mm. so because um, it's tourists. It's, and it's yeah, and it's hot inside, and and a lot of the musicians play at these big venues outside in villages. Every village usually has something going on, so we just go in. What are Glenys? Glendy is like Glindy. a oh I know a dinner I dance right it's an I event. See. You had that at FDF. Yes, at Saturday. Well, yeah. that's what they're calling it. Yes. Yeah. But, the, but there's in the Glendy at FDF. There's no Glendy actually. Are not dinner. It's just dance. But in Greece, when you go to a Glendy, it's there's food and there's you know drink and and mm -hmm. dancing and music. At FDF itself, it's got to be. The, the, you have to be Greek Orthodox to dance. You have to be in a church. Or you concert. have to have a a waiver or an exception. And uh, my daughter actually danced for several years. Uh, and I, you know, I mean, I didn't lie and say, you know, she was Greek Orthodox. No. We actually got permission to do it. Okay. Um, and uh, it was really good for her. She was going through a bad, bad time at the time, and it was really, really helpful. Mm -hmm. and she danced for several years. She danced in three different communities, actually, in different times. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's so you could if you were part of it. You could. It's, it's very unusual, and it's very rare. But Yeah, yeah. I would think so. Um, and she did it because... When she knew about it, she did it because of me, because of my mind involvement. I mean, I realized that. So. Mm -hmm. And she probably likes to dance. Yes. Oh, well, yeah. She's, she's, she's a great dancer. Is she? Yeah. Does she still dance? No. <laughs> Unfortunately. That's she's not mother of two. So. Oh, well, she's busy. Do yes. her children dance? Pardon me? Do her children dance? No, they're dance? very young. No. Her son, her kids are three and newborn. So oh, yeah. yeah they're so. not dancing yet. No. Um, how important do you think it is to FDF for it to be a competition? Or not maybe even how important, but is is that a motivator for the students? Absolutely. I know it is. Absolutely. I don't think we would get to where we were if it wasn't a competition with FDF. Um, dance has changed a lot because of FDF, at least in, in, certainly in Southern California and I think across the country. Um, when FDF started, 
there was maybe a limited number of dances that people did, a limited number of Greek dances that people did here in California. Mm -hmm. um, there were several choreographed dances. Um, and choreographed I, meaning not necessarily authentic. Yeah, they were made up, or the steps were made up, or they were changed a little bit. Um, partly because the people who taught them didn't remember how to really do them, never really learned the way they were done as villages. I think it was not so accessible to find these villages. Even today, if you don't know musicians or people, you could never find an event going on in some villages. It's, they're so remote sometimes. We went to one Glendy that was like, I mean, we got lost getting there. I had been there before, but we got lost getting there because it was all these small mountain roads and you got to take this little street to get to this street. It's like impossible to find. So unless you know where it is and somebody tells you how to get there, you might never find and it. And how did you know about that village? Or how, why because did you a friend of ours who was from who's come to FGF, I've met him here, and he's his village, and he says, okay, there's a Glendy up there, and he's going to meet us there. But yet I had to call him several times on the way up to tell him, <laughs> okay, where are we going now? Where do we go now? So but that's so cool. Yeah, it was it, it's I mean, great. You never adventure. know about that right. or, or have no, that adventure. You wouldn't, you wouldn't know. What was the name of that village? Do you Idonia. Know? A-I-D-O-N-I-A, Idonia. That's sort of the, as close as I can get to that, because I think it's spelled differently it's in spelled Greek. It's spelled differently but, in Greek, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, can you describe, or do you want to speak to how the different generations benefit from FDF? The, the, the students who are dancing are now parents of kids who are dancing, and dancers are directors, and dancers are judges, and... Well, there's a, con a whole continuity that has happened. I think there's many, many relationships that developed, marriages, mm -hmm. um, and those people were so invested in FGF as, as kids themselves that they want their kids to experience the same thing, so it continues. Um, I have made friends of all generations. I have friends who are much younger than me and friends who are older than me. Um, you know, we, we connect on this real organic level of loving the culture and the dancing. And, um, I think that the parents, the be parents benefit just because of having their kids involved, continuing the culture. You know, it's so easy in American culture to lose that because, I mean, I even see that the kids who are involved in FDF, they always, they have sports, they have, you know, uh, uh, civic activities with school, they have their own schoolwork, and school now is much more intense than it was oh, 30 years yeah. ago. So to have that, I think kids would be easy. It would be easy for kids to get lost in the greater American culture and lose that Greek culture. And I think FDF keeps them, you know, grounded into that culture. Mm -hmm. um, they can still be involved in other things, but at least when they come back together at FDF, it's it, not just FDF, but even the preparation for FDF. They they reconnect with that world. And um, I know lots of I knew lots of kids whose you know their social life was all around the people they met at FDF and the people they knew at church and not so much at, the, at mm -hmm. their school. And it's, it's still that way. It's, I'm sure it's still that way. I have less connection with that age group now, but because uh, the people I'm with have small kids now. They know, they know, so, yeah. So. <laughs> have you seen their Facebook page? Some of them, yeah. yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm connected with some of them. Yeah, on Facebook. that's fun. It's very active. They're very yeah. active on their page, which yeah. is nice. A lot of people are, and it's, you know, we all keep in touch that way. I mean, Facebook's great for that. So. I went to FDF, and I found it so entertaining. Why isn't the public coming in to watch this? I just, I, and I don't have an answer to that question. I haven't really asked anyone. But. I don't think that FDF has made, um, has made it a purpose to go out and recruit others to come and see. Um, I know like the Glendy at night, the, the parties at night, are open to anybody who wants to come, and some people do. But I've had like non-Greek friends who have come, and they have a hard time with it because it starts really late. First of all, it doesn't start yeah. till like 10, 11 o'clock. And second of all, there's a sort of a, I hate to use the word click, but if there is a little bit of a clickish feeling. You're either in FDF or you're not. And if you're in, you kind of know what's going on. You hang out together. You talk about what you see. You talk to other people. If you're not, you're really an outsider. Right. Um, now, there are people who come to FDF, Greeks who come to FDF, but they've been involved in the past, or they know other people, or they dance, and so they f they're more part of that community. But mm -hmm. if you... Like my uh, non-Greek dance friends, the ones like we go we go dance every Friday night. So all those people, if they come to FTF, they really feel like they're outsiders, and I think it's hmm. not necessarily a, a comfortable place to be. 
Interesting. Do you dance with Louise and Fred? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dancing? Yeah. I want to come to that. Well, <laughs> you should. That's <laughs> great. Dance. I know that would be fun. We also have um, once a month. We have another place where we dance in West Los Angeles. I think he gave me a card. Asteria. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's also a place in San Diego where they dance. Um, it's called the Folk Dance Center, and I can't tell you where it is. I've been there only once, so I don't know exactly where it is. Um, I was going to ask everyone a kind of easy question, or maybe not. Can you describe Kefi? Kefi. <laughs> I love that word. Kefi is nice. There is no one word in English to describe it. It's enthusiasm, it's a desire, it's a feeling of being connected to what you're experiencing, it's uh, the energy you have to participate, it's joy. Uh, when you talk about, for example, an evening that was full of kefi, it means there was so much enthusiasm, energy, everybody was involved, there was a lot of fun, you connected with people. Um, I don't know, was that yeah, that's close good. to what Nico yeah. described? Pretty um, close, yeah, <laughs> close. He said it a little differently, but yeah. do you have one memory that stands out about FDF? Either just a personal story or... Mm. I love that when my daughter was dancing, because mm -hmm. that was a really nice bond that she and I built about that. Um, so I can imagine, and, and I miss that. I miss that she's not involved. So I, that explains people who's, you know, people who are, there are judges now who were dancers first, they were directors, they're judges, and now they're parents of kids who are dancing. Nice. Or some of them were even parents of kids who directed for a while. Um, so, you know, that oh, connection in all those roles, it's an amazing experience. I mean, just the fact my daughter danced and she directed one year um, a little kids ago. So having all of that involved with, you know, all that involvement on all the different levels. And some of those people are also have been on the board or they were or they're on the parent council at their church or the head of the parent board and, and the church, you know, dance board. So they've been involved in FDF in all different areas. And it's like a web, you know, and mm -hmm. it's a, an amazing um, way to uh, to connect with with everybody, with your community, with your culture. Um, do you see that? Um, do you think FDF needs to change in any in small ways? I'm sure, but in any fundamental way to make sure it survives and grows. And I think we have to find ways to keep the the older kids involved. Mm -hmm. I think that, you know, it's too bad that we lose kids when they go to college. Um, I think we also, I, I would like to see the director, I would like to see better bridges built between the judges and the, and the directors and the dancers. Um, I think the judges have a lot to offer besides just putting numbers on a piece of paper. Um, and Nick you know, said that you go out and talk to the directors to sometimes, help them. Sometimes. That's not an organized kind Some of Some people do it more, no. It's, it's on an individual basis, like a church group will, will contact a judge and ask them to come and teach or come and give them feedback, you know. So all of us do it if we're asked. Um, some people do this professionally, so they charge, others don't. Um, but it's only, you know, if people request it. I won't do it unless somebody requests it. I'm not going to offer my services if they don't want me, you know, so I can right. stay clear. And we've had, like, forums where... We get directors and judges together in one room and, you know, talk about things. And I think we need to have more that of that. So this is where I think, and we've done that in the past. So it's not really a change. It's just we need to do more of it. Mm -hmm. But in terms of a change, I think we need to build in more structured time when the judges and the directors can interact. Um, and I think the judges have a lot to offer to FDF, and I think it would be... I think it would be beneficial if they were more involved in some of the issues that come up and resolve some of the issues. So there, so structurally that there's a, a leadership board for FDF and then the judges are, have some input into that? Well, we use two of us. There's a judge coordinator liaison who's on the board and then there's two of us judges who are judge consultants on the board. So we do give feedback and we do give some you know, contribution to what we think you know ought to be, but I th it's not structured enough, and it's not maybe structure is not the right word. It's not enough 
it's not formal enough and it's communication yeah enough. i think it doesn't necessarily happen i think what we suggest sometimes i think sometimes it's just a matter of just finding the personnel to do the things that we suggest we do some of it may be having to do with funding mm -hmm. but i thought it may be not in line with whatever the mission that the, the board perceives to be correct mm -hmm. so i just think that they, but just in that way i just think there ought to be more communication more right. interaction so that you know okay you know you want to do this but this is not going to work because you know that yes. kind of, so, so we, you know or always it's a great on. idea let's do it there used to be uh, a program where uh, young directors who wanted to learn more were sent by FDF to it was a scholarship to a seminar in Greece, mm -hmm. a dance seminar in Greece, and they were expected to videotape if they could, because a lot of a lot of uh, dance teachers don't let you videotape, and then would come back and their obligation was to make copies of their material to anybody who asked and teach whenever it was asked the things that they had done. So it was like a two-way giving street. And um, that kind of stopped a few years ago. I don't know when was the last time we gave scholarships. George Nichols was actually in charge of the scholarship, so he'll tell you more about it oh, when, you, when you interview him. Okay. Um, we even, and we had music scholarships where somebody who wanted to learn how to play an instrument could also uh, take lessons. And we, those were done here. They weren't sent to Greece because there are several musicians in the United States that could actually teach lessons. Mm -hmm. So we had those as well. And um, it was a great program. And um, You don't know why it's... I just think change of leadership, change of priorities. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what the funding is like anymore, so I don't know. I mean, I have been the funds for it. But it was valuable. I think it was valuable in terms of a dance and culture preservation. Sure. Um, um, if you... And I want to say that some of the churches also offer seminars um, and they bring people from Greece to teach or they bring people here from the United States who are knowledgeable to teach. The attendance has been, the last few times, has really been very poor. Um, directors, we have sometimes more judges that go than dance directors. Mm -hmm. um, and even the judges don't all go. I'm not sure why they don't. I think that every director wants to do their own thing. and. This is where I think that we need, this is another area where we need to work more in terms of education and bridging, is to really stress to directors the opportunities that are available to, to have these you know, people from Greece, especially, come and teach. Because mm -hmm. you can't just bring them for one weekend, you know, it's like they're there. I mean, a church can't necessarily bring them, that's a lot of, well, they do now, actually. They all bring people for, to teach them, you know, to play music for them. But these are opportunities for a lot of people to learn some things from the same person. And um, they, they, you know, the directors just don't attend. Wow. And I think that there was a time when FDF was able to give seed money for a symposium like that. And so maybe there was a tie-in that was stronger. But I also think with the advent of YouTube, people feel that they don't really need to. Really? Yeah. I was wondering about that. Yeah. If they think they can, or if you could learn it there, but it wouldn't be... Um, that and I think that people, young people, seem to be able to go to Greece and learn from them direct, some people directly as well. Or they go to the village and they would rather learn from being in the village than from a dance teacher, which I understand. There's a different feel to that, different experience. But you mean uh, students like high school and younger going to Greece? Or? Well, they might go with their family. Right. But the college age or older directors will go like there's. One director I know who went to Greece this summer, he's in his 40s, he's an older man, but mm -hmm. older man, I shouldn't say. <laughs> not a, he's not a 20 year old, but, and he went and spent several weeks in a village in Greece dancing with people who have been, you know, who kind of grew up in that culture, sure. in that village. And um, they want to do that because they want to keep it to the authentic mm -hmm. side. What did you think about, I wasn't sure I 100% followed that discussion of born in the United States and calling it folk dancing or participating in folk, Greek folk dancing versus your Greek, this is how we dance. Um, you know, I really can't say anything about that because I, you know, that I was a folk dancer first, even though I was Greek, I was still yeah. a folk dancer first. Um, I, I see that, I understand what she's saying, what Tartini was saying, um, and there, I think there's some validity to that. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then maybe it's another side of, 
I grew up in the village and I danced next to my mother and my grandmother. And so I just picked up the steps as we went. I mimicked her as opposed to the dance teacher from village across the bridge came over and taught me how to dance as opposed to I live in the United States and we brought in a teacher who lives in Boston and he taught me these dances. Right. Just, you know, different levels yeah. of learning. Sure. And I think that it's like all to the manor born, you know, somebody who grew up in the village has a very natural, who grew up in the village and danced that way, had a very different style of dancing than somebody who's been taught. Some people who've been taught can replicate. No question about it. Oh, yeah. They become very good. But I think it's actually the exception rather than the rule. Mm -hmm. I have to say, and I don't know if we get to this or not, but FGF has been a tremendous resource to publicize and restore village dancing. I think, like Fotini was saying, she grew up in Athens where they didn't necessarily dance very much. I think there's been a resurgence of finding, you know, replicating real dancing. And I do think FDF has influenced that even in Greece, because I think that people, people who teach in Greece know that there's a demand for that in, um, in, in the U.S., so they will actually make sure that that happens, or they can go and research it so they can be a resource as well. Um, there's so, definitely been a resurgence of interest in, in village dancing in Greece uh, in the last 10 years, I think. And that's... I think way. FGF has influenced that. It's wonderful. I mean, Dora Strato used to be a, the right. dance museum, and then it was a Lycion who was a, the dance museum. And I don't think now either one of them are as important to dance research as people who go on videotape old timers, older people dancing. That's wonderful. Yeah. So, um, and certainly, I mean, FDF has had a huge influence in group dancing here in Southern California. Oh. The, the, the dancing we do now today at Kipselli when we go on Friday night is so different than what we used to do when I started dancing in the 60s. Very different. What do you mean? I'm not sure. It's, we, first of all, we do a lot more dances. Mm -hmm. um, second of all, we really try to keep the dance to the authentic things. We've kind of like tried to lose all of those choreographies. Those are still some people who do them, but we try to lose it. Um, we really value keeping to the culture and not changing things. We feel in a way that we're not paying justice to the identity of people if mm -hmm. we change the dance. If, if we were going to show in this, which we want to be a really, at least Alex and I, the videographer, have talked about this, we want to show a lot of dancing in, in the video, obviously. Um, to show really authentic, is it possible to show authentic dancing and have it sort of described in a video context? Um, you mean what looks, what might be authentic versus what might be inauthentic? Yeah, without making a direct comparison, but I would like to, I mean, there's there's FDF, which is student dancing, and I, I'm not sure I'm, I'm saying this correctly, but I'd like to be able to show this is an authentic, this is this village, this is authentic dancing, and it's associated with FDF, but it's maybe not up there on the stage yet. There's a couple of, some some events that happened during the year that would show that. Uh, certainly, I would not say that at Gipselli, that that would be authentic. Because, right. You know, none of us dance the way we do, but there the Korean community has a lot of different dances. Uh, there's two in Southern California, one in, in Orange County and one in here in the L.A. County. And you have a lot of Cretans who come and dance. Um, that's one of the best venues that I can think of. Okay. On the, there's a lot more on the East Coast. Um, but even on the East Coast, we really? go, my husband and I go every year to Connecticut where there is a, a Pontian community and we go to their dance, to their Glendy. And um, if you film the older people, they look really, really look the way they made people dance, you know, 50 years ago. But if you look at the young people, they now have formed a dance group and their dance group is not at all what I have seen you know, um, people in the villages dance like. It's very uh, stylized, it's very automatic, robotic-like sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, they've added some movements that really have no place there. Um, so, 
you know, this is this is a a, a community of people whose parents and grandparents, well, grandparents came from Pontos, which is no longer a right. country anymore, but who came from there, who settled, who probably settled in Greece first and then came to the U.S. And their parents, the parents and the grandparents, still danced the way they learned when they were younger. Sure. But the young kids are now have changed. Their dance has changed, which is interesting because the director dances very nicely. So I, it's hard for me How to see. How funny! The, yeah, yeah the, the the evolution. But in the U.S., those like those grandparents in Connecticut, they're not teaching the the younger generations. Some of them are. Some of them are. Well, the parents. It's more the parents' generation that's sure. teaching, and they themselves are very good dancers. But it's not getting. That would be a I'm tough not thing a dance to group. do because not everyone's a teacher, and if you don't have a big community, I would think. Yeah. Now there are several. I know Ponchin because that's what I'm, you know, like I right. said, that's what I'm, there are several Ponchin communities on the East Coast. So I've seen several of them, and to me, none of them really look the way I see. When you know, I see videos of younger people dancing in the 50s or 60s or 70s, it has changed. Now, dance evolves. You're not, sure. I mean, how far back do we want to go to say this was authentic? How much, you know, the most we have is maybe 100 years ago, we might have a film or two, but... We really don't know what it was like. So, I wish this is my something I always struggle with, with which is why when I, when I talk about FGF, I talk about an overall look rather than a particular style because I say, okay, so maybe they're dancing. This is the way they're dancing today in this village. Twenty years ago, they danced differently. Fifty years ago, they danced differently. Where do we stop? Where does it stop being authentic? You know, right? At what point in time? So and it sounds like now it goes, there's a lot of cross. Yes, a lot of cross influence, and because people are taught instead of dancing in the village. Mm -hmm. So when did when did that start? When did we start teaching the dance instead of the kids just learning it by themselves? I don't know, 50s, 60s, 70s. Yeah, it's it's hard to put a, a, a timeline on it. So, you know, interesting. That's just my philosophy. I know other people feel differently. Yeah. No, I think that's an interesting question, though. Interesting observation. Yeah. Where is it in Connecticut? What is there a time of no year? Uh, well, we go in November. They're, they're, they have things all year round, as I'm finding out, because now I'm on Facebook with them. But their big dinner dance is the first is the third Saturday of November. Mm -hmm. Usually the week before Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Yeah. Um, but there's others: Philadelphia, Boston. Boston has a very large Boston community, and they have two different clubs. And New York also has. Huh. So now here, here's something you might want to do. In the last weekend of June, there is a youth, a Pontian Youth Conference, and it's in Boston this year. And so you get the dance groups from all the different East Coast Pontian communities who come. Not from FDF, they don't very sure yeah. come from the West Coast, but you know. I, I, we went, I went one year to that youth conference, I probably won't go this year, but uh, it's, it's an interesting event to go to because then you see all the dance groups and you'll see the difference between the people when they dance for themselves just freely as opposed to actually performing. Mm -hmm. That would be really cool. Be because everyone mentions Ponte dancing. I haven't <laughs> really? talked to anyone. <laughs> really? They all either like to watch it or like to do it, but well, all have talked to maybe 10 people. You know, just not well, Eris is Ponte himself, or at least half Ponte. Well, yes. Oh, yeah. That's a big thing for him. Right? Yeah, he loves that one. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, is there anything you'd like to see in this video, for sure? That, or say, or have it, if they're just, and you can think about that and, and get back to us about it. But. I probably will, because that's how my mind works. I always think of things I should have said earlier. Well, yeah, that's... You know, I, I, I think Factor is fabulous. I really do. I think it's one of the most exciting uh, events that happen. It used to be that the entire FGF community would turn out to see the performance much more, and especially the oldest kids, what they call the advanced seniors. And in, in the past, the people who won that award were expected to come back the next year and do a performance. That stopped about two years ago. They stopped requiring them to do that. But, and, and, and one of the reasons is they changed the time when they did it, and so nobody was showing up. They were people were out doing partying or dancing oh, or whatever. Late. So it was that was late, the end of Saturday night, and there was too much going on, and nobody wanted to be there, I guess. So 
they said this was a useless question. Um, but even during the performances now, more than half the time the room is empty. And we have, and they have these gigantic rooms, yeah. and it's empty. And it's like, it's the same reason that people don't go to the seminars when they're offered. It's like they don't support each other's communities. Every church has a, has a, a glendy, a, a festival, a food festival. And you don't see very many people from different churches go to all of them. You know, they may go to one or two. Um, it used, there used to be much more interaction between the churches and the communities. Mm -hmm. I think that happens at FDF in, on an individual basis, which is why there's still a lot of marriages going on. But I think in terms of community support, there isn't as much. Um, and that's, that's a shame. But so here I, I am, now the part that I was going to say for myself, I'm, I'm technically not an outsider because, I'm an insider outsider. I'm an insider because I've been a judge for so long, because I wound up, thanks to Peter actually, I wound up being on, a, on the board or on mm -hmm. the decision making capacity. Um, you know, Peter trusted me with that responsibility, but I'm not Greek Orthodox. So for me, the church part of it is not as important as the dance part. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that I, I find that it's sometimes maybe picks me in odd with what needs to be done because I see like certain things that I like to see, but that may not fit in with the religious ministry part of it. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I take a back seat because I don't want to feel like I'm barging in somewhere where you know, I'm not, mm. I don't understand what needs to happen. So, um, you know, but on the, the, the other part of that is as an outsider, the fact that I've been able to be involved for 27 years is a marvelous experience. And I remember in the years when the kids would dance and the room was packed for everything that happened. And at the time my kids were in camp and in after school childcare at Jewish centers. And whenever there was a performance or the kids were doing a play or a skit or something, only a few parents came. Mm -hmm. And I remember telling Louise, as a matter of fact, saying to her, why doesn't this, meaning FDF, why isn't this happening in the Jewish community? Why don't we have this kind of community support for our kids in the Jewish community? Uh, and I found that disappointing. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, in the Greek community, I see that some of that involvement is, you know, lessened. But it's also right. helpful that you have that the history and the kind of the outsider point of yeah. view in that way. So I would think that's really good input for it. It is, I think, and that's why I think that people have allowed me to still be involved. Sure. You know? <laughs> allowed <So>. me. <laughs> they love you. Well, I always think that someday they're going to say, because all the kids have to be Greek Orthodox, and I'm going to say, well, we want all the judges to be Greek Orthodox too. So I was not expecting that to happen. So. Well, I hope not. <laughs>